All you need to do is check this out. So I'm gonna lift, push that lever out of the way, pull the string down, YouTube, what's up? I'm just making a super lo-fi video. Got my phone recording. Yeah, because it's a new bass day and I wanted to capture the birth of these basses on camera. I've got this here that I'm gonna talk about in one minute. It's like a 70s jazz bass. And, and this particular one is badass. Wanted to uh, talk about, you know, 70s jazz basses, why they're a little different. And why you, why you might wanna go try one. And then I've also got this beast to show you. Anybody know what one of these is? Have you seen one of these before? Wait till you see the headstock. Oh, what the? What is that going on there? These are really, really unique basses. Um, yeah, I think you're gonna love hearing about these and that thing at the end of the headstock. Let me tell you about this one first. This is, uh, this is the bass that I am. Um... Based on a saw for sale on a forum online, you know, this is actual real wear that's happened on this body. You can see here that there's like, well, you can't see, but there's like serious, serious wood that's missing out of here. For me, if, you know, if an alien came down and said, what, what should a 70s jazz bass sound like? I'd probably be like, well, probably like Marcus Miller. For, and I'm not sure, let me know in the comments if you're the same, but for me, my, ears always go towards 70s jazz basses well that's like Marcus right uh, because Marcus has got such a an incredible signa signature sound right he famously uses I think it's a 77 jazz bass I'm sure that you guys will let me know in the comments if it isn't. I think it's a 77 jazz bass. Now, if you don't know the difference between a 70s jazz bass and a normal jazz bass, like a, a 60s jazz bass or an 80s jazz bass, in the 70s, there was a couple of different things going on that was a little different than on the, the previous models. Firstly was the, and most importantly, I think, is the, the pickup spacing was different on a 70s jazz bass. This one is in the same position on a, is on a, as on a 60s jazz bass. This one is actually further back towards the bridge. So on a 60s jazz bass, this pickup here is like here, right? But on this one, it's further back towards the bridge and it does change the sound, for sure. Like it has that. That 70s jazz bass vibe, that Marcus Millery esque thing. Also, you know, on this particular bass, we've got a maple fingerboard. Going back to what I was saying there with that traditional 70s jazz bass, you know, for me, a lot of them have that, that an ash body, whereas this one, as you can see here, has got an older body. So it's a it's a, an older body, but with a maple fretboard, block binding, as you can see here. It's got the blocks on the fingerboard. Now, if you're wondering what the bridge pickup sounds solo, it sounds great. Just because it's further back towards the bridge doesn't mean it sounds thin. And if I dial that tone down. Another big thing that they did in the 70s that was different, um, not at the beginning of the 70s, but at some point, I think around 74 actually, they went to this three bolt system here. Beforehand, they had the four bolts on this is the three bolts. And they also had this like little neck. If you look really carefully in there, can you see that hole there? So that is a neck tilter, um, a neck tilt system. I think it's got like a micro tilt or something like that. Anyway, you put a little Allen wrench in there and you can adjust the, uh, the angle of the neck. The actual truss rod, you can see it there. Look, the bullet truss rod. Um, so you could adjust the truss rod at this end of the neck, which is actually amazing because I hate 
that on those 60s jazz basses and even jazz basses, you know, like now, that you have to adjust it in there. So you have to sort of like undo the bolts of the neck to adjust the truss rod. It's just, oh, it's, it's hell, hell on earth. I'm not sure if I said, but this is a 74. This is a 70, 74 jazz bass and it just kills it. Talking of slap, talking of slap, if you haven't checked out um, our new uh, slap accelerator program that we've just released, let me just grab this other bass while I'm telling you about this. We've just released this thing called the slap accelerator, which is like a, a brand new 16 week course. Um, it's actually presented by myself and Ian Martin Allison. We present it together. It was the best fun doing, it was, I've never had as much fun ever in, in terms of creating an online program. And I think that we've done a really, really outstanding job of presenting um, a curriculum that will really, really help you get your slap bass chops together. We do it in a way over the 16 week period, we do it in a way where everything's like layered on top of each other, right? So what we did with the slap accelerator is we identified that, you know, that the amp isn't on. <laughs> we identified this stuff like, you know, that's gonna be, that's popping, isn't it? Oh! That we identified that there's like thumbs and pops, hammer-ons, slides, pull-offs, you know, double thumbs, open hammer plugs, and a bunch of other things actually, like 10 different elements that really make up your slap bass. Uh, technique and what we've done with that that uh, the slap accelerator the brand new program that, we, that we've got open for enrollment is basically teach you each individual technique combining them and not only just teaching you the the techniques but teaching you how to make real music with it like giving you real riffs and songs to play so it's not just you know learning a not just that it's actually you know getting riffs like that and using them within songs and really understanding how to get you know slap bass into your playing it's a really really phenomenal program we only open it for enrollment once per year it's open right now and enrollment closes either tomorrow or the day after i think so i'll put a link down below in the description go check it out there or you can just go to Ian and Scott go wild.com because I'm just a big old child. Okay, so Ian and Scott go wild.com or I'll put the link in the description. Go check out that program. If anything, just go check it out just in case you do want to enroll in it because obviously it's going to be next. It's going to be like, yeah, autumn time or fall time 2023 before we open that again. It's going to be, it's going to be awesome. Anyway, let me tell you about this bass because it's. <laughs> Oh, so good. Everything's rattling in here. Sorry. So this is a Cubicki Factor um, designed by the, the late, great Philip Cubicki. The first person I saw playing one of these was Stu Ham on an old Hot Licks video. Give me a shout in the comments if you know those videos, the Hot Licks videos. Ian, Martin Allison, you guys know Ian, right? He was flying over here. Um, to, to do a bunch of content for the YouTube channel. We'd been geeking out beforehand because he's got a Cubicky Factor and I met him at the hotel and he presented me with this. And he, I was like, what? Insane, right? Insane. My mind was blown. It's still blown. So anyway, it's a Cubicky Factor from 1986, maybe 89, 89. And what makes it interesting is every single thing on the damn bass makes it interesting. That's what makes it interesting. Look at the body shape. So the body shape, hello, I'm right here. The body shape, first of all, is just phenomenal. Like, it's just a, it's like a tribute to the 80s design, isn't it? Like this, if there was a bass in Blade Runner, this would have been it for sure. Next up is there, there are all of these little weird little things that make it awesome. So for instance, can you, I'm just gonna hold it here. Can you see the neck is made out of like a gazillion laminates? So it's not a one piece neck, it's like a gazillion piece neck. The methodology there is like the rigidity of, of it. Rigidity? And like, it really is like, um, it doesn't move. 
It's like it's made out of rock. <laughs> it's crazy. It's also got this headstock, which I'm going to get to in a minute because it's crazy. The pickups are Cubicki pickups. It's got this incredible, like, look at the bridge on this thing. It's all, you know, built and designed in-house. Uh, these are the tuners here. Like you string it through here. You actually, the ball ends go on here, in there, right there. It's got active electronics. Um, and they're, they're kind of like when, if somebody was like, oh, what kind of vibe is it? It's like Cubicki. <laughs> Volume here, right? And then this is a balance between the two pickups. So you've got bridge and then um, neck there. I'll show you in a minute. It's killer. Right here, we've got the bass knob on the top. Underneath, we've got the treble knob under there. And then this is a selector switch. Check it out. So it's mute. Then you've got this one. The next one along, which is, this is like the, the cubicy sound. Then we've got another one. Then we've got a couple more as well. If you guys know what this, all the selector knobs are, let me know. It's got this, you know, it's got this big fat vibe, but you can also just put it on the neck pickup, turn that treble all the way off, and it gets this. Okay, so check this out. This is a detuner. All you need to do is check this out. So I'm gonna lift, push that lever out of the way, pull the string down, and then now. Instant D. And I can also play these lower frets down here and check it out. stay in the same place <sighs> so freaking phenomenal that you know when you tune down to Dean you don't know where any of the notes are here they all stay in the same place and then if you want it back to like a, a normal D a normal E all you need to do is pull down on that string Push that up, and then you're back. Super, super cool. It's a 32 inch scale base from here to here. So it's two inches shorter than a, and you can kind of hear it in the sound, right? Now, with that said, just wanted to thank you for hanging with me today and uh, enjoying my new bass day with me, our new bass week. And, uh, and just remind you as well that if you want to come learn slap bass with myself and Mr. Ian Martin Allison, the slap accelerator is closing for enrollment either tomorrow or the day after. Um, it might even be closing as you're watching this video, depending on when you watch it, obviously. It might have even closed. So go check it out. It will be an absolute honour to help get your slap bass chops uh, to that next level. I've been putting in a lot of work in myself over the last 18 months. So I've been working hard and I've taken a lot of those learnings and inserted them right into the slap bass accelerator. If you want to check it out, link is below or you can just go to Ian and Scott go wild.com. See you in the shed.